each manufacturer has specifications for minimum computer requirements. You want to make sure that your PC is compatible for doing reprogramming. There are steps to ensure that your PC is up to date. You want to go through those steps. Now, each manufacturer is going to have their minimum specifications. You have to meet the minimum or greater to use their websites for reprogramming. The PC, the laptop, is a huge part of reprogramming. It's going to be an interface between you and the manufacturer and your J2534 pass-through device. So here we have an example of the Ford website. And it's talking about the recommended minimum PC requirements. Processor 500 megahertz, which is very slow. So it's not like it's a blindingly fast brand new computer, high dollar. Your memory, your RAM has to be at least 128 megabytes. You have to have 200 megabytes of hard drive. Your graphic card has to be 16-bit color, 800 by 600. You have to have a high-speed internet connection. Your software requirements is XP or 2000 or later. You have to have a web browser that's at least as new as Internet Explorer 5.5. On this website, you're going to have to have Adobe Acrobat Reader, and that's version 5 or later. So how do you check your system information? Now, this is just a screen of my desktop. I have a lot of icons on there. You may have more or less. But this is the desktop. So from the desktop, you want to click down there at the Start button. And then you're going to get this pop-up window. Go up to the top there where it says My Computer and click on that. And it's going to take you to this particular pop-up window. We just blew it up so you can see it a little bit better. Mouse over an area that does not have icons on it and right-click. And then you're going to get this window here and go to the bottom of that window where it says Properties and click on that. And you're going to get this window here and we'll pop it up and make it larger for you. And you can see up at the top it's telling us, yes, we have XP and we have Service Pack 2. So we're better than the minimum. Down here at the bottom it's telling us that we have 3.2 gigahertz and they only wanted a 500 megahertz computer we have two gigabytes of ram they only wanted 128 megabytes so we're our computer's fine here now how do you check for hard drive update from your desktop click on that start button down there and then go up to my computer and you're going to get this window here we'll enlarge it a little bit for you and you can mouse over your uh, local drive your hard drive ours is designated C yours may be something else if someone changed it uh, I know every computer I've ever had it's been C but don't take my word for it I'm not a computer geek but you want to get your hard drive and then when I mouse over mine I get this free space uh, 392 gig gigabytes so I know that I have at well over 200 megabytes of free space now if yours doesn't give you that information when you mouse over it like mine does right here you want to mouse over right click on your hard drive go to this window here down to the bottom where it says properties and then click on that and you get this one here and we'll blow it up again and you can see that yes free space 392 gigabytes so I have plenty of on my particular computer how do you check your graphics card well from your desktop take your mouse to a blank area that has no icons and then right click in that area and get this window here and what you want to do is go down to the bottom and click on properties and you get this particular pop-up window here. We'll blow it up for you. Look at the tabs across the top, starting with themes, desktop, screensaver, appearance, and then setting. That's what we want. We want to click on the settings. And then we get this window here and go ahead and look down here. Screen resolution and quality. And that's telling us that we have a 1280 by 760 and they wanted 800 by 600. So we're fine there. They wanted 16-bit color and we have 32-bit color. So we're fine. I don't have to do anything. But what if uh, your PC doesn't meet the minimum requirements? Look at our screen resolution down there. It's 400 by 300. You're not meeting the minimum requirements. So what do you do? There's a slider bar there. Click on it. 
hold your mouse down and slide it to the right until the numbers down there at the bottom are at least a minimum or greater than what they want. If you can't get that, the problem is your monitor. The monitor is going to have to be replaced. All right. So we've slid ours over to 1280 by 768, and that's where I like it. That's the that's where I use it all the time. So I'm fine there. Now, how about my 16-bit color? You can see mine's 32, so it's fine. But if I click on that downward pointing arrow, I get a drop-down box that says my two selections are, in fact, 16-bit, the minimum, or 32-bit. I'm just going to leave mine at 32-bit. So that's where I keep it all the time. Then I want to go down and click Apply. Your screen may go black for a few seconds. Then click OK, and boom, you, uh, you ensure that you have the right graphics card. So if you can't get the right uh, pixels, you may have to change your graphics card or you may have to change your uh, monitor. I got to tell you that on most modern uh, computers, I've gone around and checked quite a few of them since I've been doing this, that it's never the graphics card. It seems to be always that they have a cheap monitor. Even the cheapest of the cheap laptops have a graphics card equal to 800 by 600 or greater. But if, it's, if you have a good monitor and you know it's not that, then it is, in fact, your graphics card. So I misspoke when I said it's got to be the monitor. It can be either or. So go ahead and click down here when you want to determine what the software levels are. Click down here just like we have been and then get this and go over all programs. Mouse over all programs and you're going to get this window here. We're going to blow it up a little bit and then we're going to take our mouse and put over Adobe Acrobat Reader and you can see that I have 7.0 there. Now if yours doesn't look like that, go ahead and mouse over it and then right click on that and you'll get this very familiar window by now and once again go down to properties and click on that and you can see as we blow this up that we have version 7.0 which is greater than 5.0 so our software that they wanted to uh, tell us that this is the minimum requirement we, we pass it that's fine All right. so how about PC power settings the last thing you want to do is have your monitor or your computer go to sleep or hibernate during a reprogramming session. So go on your desktop, click down here where it says start, go up to control panel. Now your control panel may or may not look like this, so give me a chance to talk about both of them here. This is the, the newest version. So I, I'm in control panel, I go down to performance and maintenance and click on that. Then I find power options and I click on that and I get this pop-up window, power options properties. Before we talk about this window, let's go back for a minute. From my control panel in the top left hand corner, it gives me an option to switch back to the classic view. If I click on that, this is what your control panel may look like. This is what they used to look like. Now they look like mine, and you can switch back and forth if you like it. So this is what you have, or this is what you like. Go ahead and use it, and then go down and find Power Options and click on it, and you get the same window. Let's blow it up here. Now we want to look at these four items. You can see I have mine set up where I never uh, uh, turn off the hard drive and I never let the system hibernate, but it does go into standby after 20 minutes of inactivity and it will turn the monitor off after 15 minutes of activity. But you want to change all of them to never. The way you do that is start with turn off monitor, hit the drop down arrow, go all the way down to the bottom where it says never, and then go to the, the hard drive, go all the way to the bottom, never, and then system standby, click on that downward pointing arrow, go to the bottom and hit never, and then system hibernates, click on that downward pointing arrow, all the way to the bottom, never, and that's where you want to keep your power settings during reprogramming. You can always go back and change them when you're done reprogramming. Now, very important is keeping your PC updated. So let's talk about that right now. Let's first talk about the automatic updates. Now this is where I live and breathe because I have mine set up for automatic updates. It's not that I never do manual updates, but it's rarely. Now, from your desktop, 
click start right down there where we've been clicking before and click turn off your computer now you don't really have to turn it off right now but just click it anyway and you get this now this is the window we want to talk about you can when you want to install updates automatically you click here to turn off it says in the bottom right here click turn off to install important updates and turn off your computer now it says click here to turn off without installing updates so you have both options if you want to install the automatic updates and you know when you have automatic updates because you can see that Microsoft icon up in there and when you click on it it'll say don't turn your computer off don't do anything we're installing updates and then we'll turn the computer off when we're done if you don't want to install automatically you can go ahead and click down there under that underlined area that says click here to turn off without installing them All right, turning on the automatic updates what if you don't get that icon you've never gotten it you don't know what it is you never saw it that means one of two things that means your automatic update is not turned on or that means you're not on the web if your computer's not connected to the web you're never going to get an update so to turn on the automatic updates click down here on start go up to that control panel and I'm just going to click to this, the uh, classic view right now and you can see that I'm going to go over here to automatic updates and click on that and this is the window I got. I'll enlarge it a little bit for you and I want to put a dot or I want to click on that automatic updating button there and I click on that and that's where I leave mine and then I'm going to hit apply and then I'm going to hit OK and that's where I leave mine. Now a lot of people don't like automatic updates. They want to make sure they know what's going into their computer. They want to have more control so they do manual updating. Click on the start button, mouse over all programs, and then you get this window that shows you all the programs installed. Look in the top left hand corner up here and it says window updates. Go ahead and mouse over it and click on it and then it takes you to Microsoft's web page so of course you have to be on the web and this is what you you get now I'm going to click on Express every time I'm not a computer geek I never click on the custom uh, I know a lot of people do and, and good for them they're computer guys but I'm not I'm gonna let Microsoft help me with my computer so I'm going to click Express and then it's gonna welcome me and ask me to wait a minute while it's checking for the latest updates if I get updates if there are updates for my computer I'm gonna get this window here if I if there are none it's going to say there are none available. But here I have something available for my computer. If I want to know what it is, look there in the blue just above download and install now. Just look up there a little bit right there and click on that and it'll tell me that hey this is a 1.1 megabytes less than one minute download and it's telling me, telling me that it's a Windows genuine advantage validation tool enables me to and it's going to tell me all about that stuff and if I'm interested in it I can click on uh, download and install now and then in this one here they want me to read a license and agree to it so I accept and then it starts downloading now the appearance of the window may change during the download but it's still downloading when it's done it'll say initially uh, installation successful and then you want to click finish and you have your computer updated you can go back as many times as you want and do the manual Now, read the screen carefully when you're updating your computer understand what it's asking you to do to, or what it's telling you to do many of us like me I rely on Microsoft's automatic updates others want to have greater control over what happens to their computer and I understand that the fact is that your PC must continuously be updated. Use this training program to ensure you can set up your PC for J2534 reprogramming. You can change the power settings back to normal, like I do, after the program is completed. Now, it, this all may seem confusing at first, but after a few times, you're going to find it simple.